Hello and welcome to my hotel room in London. Yes, I'm in London. And we drove up to London and I realised that I do some really weird things when I'm in the car. So I just thought I would list some of these odd things that I do when I'm in long car journeys. Uh, first thing is that I try and find songs that seems like they could be in films where someone's moving house, usually like check flicks, and then they just sit in cars and look out the window while listening to quite sad music, usually with proper big headphones in, because that's what I do. And you just sit and it's kind of like, it's brilliant. I don't know why, but I do it all the time. Like, even not particularly long journeys, I just like doing it. So that's one of my odd things. Number two, unlike most people who, when someone is looking at them when they're in a car and they've been singing along to songs, like, usually you would stop, right? But I, I feel the need to sing so much more enthusiastically and try and look the person who's watching me in the eye but just like kind of dance about as well so they just feel quite awkward <laughs> staring at you dancing around. Uh, number three, I look for odd place names but who doesn't do that? I mean there's a place near where I live called Cummer Trees. It's a brilliant place name. Uh, number four, if my parents are listening to some really bad music. I try and sing along really horrendously just so hopefully they change the CD over because of my bad singing. I, I feel a little guilty about it but it's just it's too funny to stop doing. And number five, when someone looks at me from a different car and then they turn around I always duck if they look back again just so they feel like they've kind of lost their mind. So that's five odd things I do in car journeys. So if you ever see a short blonde 13 year old looking girl in a car doing any of these things to you, it is probably me and I apologise in advance. Or you could become the people doing it too and then everyone would be really confused by why there are so many odd children doing weird things in cars. Not that many people watch my videos, so it really wouldn't make that much of a difference. But anyway, if you are watching this video and you want to do these odd things, then feel free. So there you go. Five odd car facts about me. Goodbye. Well, hello again, even though it won't really be hello again, because I was like just here saying goodbye. But it really just seems like I've moved to a different room and changed my clothes. But anyway, this is a different day, and I'm not just weird. And it's actually four days after I made that video, but I didn't bother like doing this until now because I'm really lazy and I have just been sleeping basically and trying to catch up on homework. I have a lot of homework. I just still haven't done. Yeah, I'm still doing this. Shh. No one has to know. Anyway, what I am going to talk about is the great stuff I bought in London because I'm not really the, the person who goes to museums and stuff because frankly I find them really, really dull. I don't see how anyone cannot find them dull. They're just, there's no denying it. They're horrendous. But anyway, uh, I just bought stuff. And the first thing I bought when I got to London, the night that I got there, I went out and bought some bananas. And that was it. This bunch of bananas, which I ate that night actually. And there were, there were some very good bananas, actually. The reason why I bought them was because I read this thing on foods that make you happy. So, bananas was one of them, and thus I started eating loads and loads of bananas. 
But anyway, the, the stuff gets gradually more impressive the further on my trip to London. So, no need to be like, oh my god, she's going to be talking about other fruit that she bought. Because it's not quite that dull. I mean, the next thing I bought was noodles. Yeah, that's a whole step up from Japan Centre. They're totally amazing noodles. Well, it's like ramen cup. They're awesome. If you're ever in London near Japan Centre, go buy those noodles. They are amazing. And don't get fooled by like the thing that's like a giant bowl, like that size. And it's more expensive by like a pound than that cup. And yet, there's like 20 less grams in it. See, I am intelligent and I checked the weights. Ah, uh, my mother has taught me well. Anyway, still still trying to get more impressive with my things I bought. So after Japan Center, I went to... Well, I was aiming to go to Tokyo Toys. And then I saw this little Japanese shop just up the stairs from Tokyo Toys. So I went in there first and I was just looking at stuff and then I saw that they had a death note so I thought I just had to buy it. It was amazing. I love anime. And it's so cool because it's got all the rules obviously like death notes do but it's got like the names of the characters who died. Like there's Lindell Taylor from like the first episode. So cool. Totally awesome. Yeah. So after that, I did actually go to Tokyo Toys. And I spent ages looking around at all the stuff. Because I, I love Tokyo Toys. It was actually the main reason I wanted to go to London. As sad as it is to go to a shop, which isn't even particularly big. But in Tokyo Toys, I bought a kunai. Oh yeah. I'm such a ninja. Last time I went, I bought a new little headband. So now I've totally got like an awesome combo of ninja and I've just got an obsession of like spinning it around and catching it to look like I'm going to stab someone. But I'm totally not violent in the slightest. I also bought a book because I'm nerdy but it's a very sexy book. An L book. It's the book of the film. L changed the world. Although... I'm not enjoying it as much as the BB murder cases ones, just because it really doesn't fit in with the storyline of actual Death Note. I would still say to people that they should read it, but don't get too excited over it, because it's, it's not that awesome. Yeah, so after all my Japanese shopping, the next day I went to the Doctor Who experience. God, I'm just sounding so much lamer. Like, the more I go on. Yeah, so I went to the Doctor Who experience because I do love me some Doctor Who. And this is where I got the coolest of my things, actually. Yeah, so I bought myself, because before, the week before, when I was in Glasgow, I went in the comic book shop and I was like, oh, I really want to buy a sonic screwdriver. And they had like a £20 set of like three. And you can like switch them round, and I was like, I don't want to switch them round. I just want the actual sonic screwdriver. And then, obviously, as I was in the Doctor Who experience, oh, it is so awesome. I I just love it, and that's not even the coolest thing. I also I got my friend like a TARDIS filled with oh, that's just gonna keep going off. Filled with like jelly and body parts. <laughs> it's so random. But I'm gonna have to lift the laptop up for this to show you how goddamn amazing the next thing I got was. Well, it wasn't actually me who got it. It was my parents who were like, oh, since we're taking you on a trip to London, we're also gonna buy you something to remember your trip to London. So just pick something and then. When I was in the Doctor Who experience shop, I was like, oh my god, I have to have that. Alright, so this is the super awesome thing I got, and it is, ta-da, a life-size cardboard cutout of David Tennant as the Doctor. Look, I'm so small next to it, I'm only up to his shoulder. Oh, it's so cool. It's just, it's really smooth <laughs> as well. 
as weird as that is to see what I like. I'm just stroking them now. I'm such a freak. Oh well. That is awesome. And I just realised I'm pointing at his crotch. Anyway, those are all the awesome things I got in London. So, I guess this is bye. And this actually is bye. Unlike before, where I said bye and then I ended up coming back. That this is this is bye forever in this video. But I'll I'll say hello again in another video. So, bye.